This coming Sunday, then, is Father's Day, and if your dad's still around, make sure you look after your dad on Father's Day. And if you're a dad, make sure that somebody's taking care of you as well. And if your dad's not around for whatever reason, give some thought to your dad this coming weekend, won't you? I want to talk about dads tonight on the programme. As always, on a Thursday night, I like to reflect talking about love and relationships, but I want to talk about dads. What's it like to have an absent father? What's it like to be an absent father? Are you an absent father? Two sides often to the same story. Which affected you? Or maybe you're glad that you're out of that situation now. Share that story. Quite happy to change your name, of course. The number to get through to me here at the BBC, 03453 009956. You can text me, 81333, start your text with GT. And emails, please, to gt at bbc.co.uk. I want to bring in Ray. Hello, Ray. Hello, Graham. How are you there? I'm, I'm all right. How are you? Oh, not so bad. Not so bad. Good. Yeah. And I know you've broken off watching the football to talk to me tonight as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, it's the big match. Yeah, yeah absolutely. We'll come <laughs> on to that in a few moments' time. Uh, yeah. You're an absent dad. Um, uh, yes, I suppose that's what, that's kind of one one term that uh, that's often used to describe it. I kind of um, uh, w- wouldn't choose the word absent. Um, it, it it kind of I- it implies that one has walked away from um, from one's children and, and and from one's family and from one's responsibilities. And that's certainly, uh, it's certainly not how I would think of myself. And and I think a lot of um, a, a lot of dads. It, it's a term I think that the CSA first started using. Right. Um, and, uh, and and there's a kind of imp- it's, I've always felt there's a kind of implication there that the absent dad is somebody who's abandoned his responsibilities. Okay. Well, just yeah. put me in the picture if you can, just a little bit here. I'm not going to delve too much into the details, but yeah. why you aren't in contact with your children? Um, well, uh, I separated um, uh, some 13 years ago now from my from my wife, and uh, we had three children, uh, and um, it was a very acrimonious split. Uh, and um, I haven't seen my oldest two children from that day to this. How many children do you have with that wife? Uh, three. Three. Okay. Yes. So you've only seen one of them. Yes, the the youngest one. There was a, a lengthy court battle that went on for about six years for me to right. try and get contact um, with my youngest, uh, and um, uh, I I managed to get um, uh, contact with him in the end. Um, but uh, uh, that ended after after he was sixteen when the court order ended. Um, and he chose not to have contact with you any longer. That's right. In fact, all, all three of my children. On the face of it, that's what they've done. Um, Why do you think that's so? Well, um, I mean, I think I need to look back to the the, the factors around the break, and um, my, my the, the break. It was never my choice. It was my my wife found another man, and she had a, a an affair with him that lasted for a year that I didn't know about for the majority of that time. And she had um, got our eldest two children um, going on outings with this man and getting her to keep his him secret from me. So they were having to go on various outings, playing golf and going for walks and then coming back and having to tell me a prepared story that had been given to them about where they'd been in order to conceal this affair from me. And the effect of that, um, I mean, I've, I've, I've never really managed to bottom out in my own mind the impact that would have had on these two children who were aged nine and seven at the time. Mm. Um, but um, I, the, the, I think the, the reality is that they just that they lost respect for me. Um, they couldn't look me in the face. I think they both felt that they had done something terribly wrong by by, by um, effectively eliminating me from the family and from my home. There must have been great feelings of guilt, I think, um, within the minds of, of them. Um, and, uh, I mean, I, I've been involved a lot in, in fathers' rights groups and campaigning groups ever since, so I've met a lot of dads in a similar position. Um, and, I, and I think what happens to children in this situation is that it's such a traumatic thing that happens to them that they cope with 
carrying on with, with, with life on a day-to-day basis just by shutting that parent out of their mind. It's just too difficult and too painful for them to try and keep a relationship going with both. And so they side with one or other parent, which is invariably the parent that they end up living with, primarily. Uh, And um, in order to make uh, um, life tolerable, they uh, join forces with the parent they live with in alienating the other parent. And once that die has been set, and I mean, my, my children are grown up now. How old are they, your children? Are? Um, 24, 22, 21. Right. Um, so, yes, one could say um, it, it's a kind of adult choice now not to have anything to do with me. But I look back to when they were age nine and seven. Um, and, I mean, they, they, they were not responsible for what happened. Uh, uh, no child of that age is. Let me ask you, Ray, if either of them were listening to what you were saying right now on the radio, what yes. would you like to say that they've missed out on? Um, Well, they've missed out on having a a dad, and I've missed out on having children. Um, They've missed out on my influence over their lives and their upbringing. Uh, Whatever people they are now, and I really don't know who they are now in terms of the kind of people they've turned out to be, but whoever that is, it's not who they would have been if they had had my involvement in their lives. It's not who... Who they are now is not who they should have become. Mm. And, I, and I think that's the essential thing that, that, that they've missed out on. Um, there's there's, there's um, endless um, statistics about the disadvantage to children of growing up without the involvement of their father. Um, but I, I, th- I think the one simple thing is that, um, they, is that they've, they've missed out with one of the most important influences that they could and should have had throughout their development years Um, and that is a a burden it's an absence which they are going to have to carry with them throughout the rest of their lives let me ask you ray what do you hope one day um i I have very little hope um really Uh, i mean i I would love my children to come and see me I i would love to restore that relationship with them um but I, I have to accept the reality that um, nothing can make up for those lost years. If, if I meet with my children again, if I have some kind of relationship with them again, it, it will never be really like a father-child relationship because all of those years have been lost, they've been missed. Um, there's no kind of common memories. You've been through lots of Father's Days without your children being in your life. Yes. What do you think on Father's Day? What are you going to be thinking about on Sunday? Um, I try not to think about Father's Day. Um, it, it's, it, it, I just prefer to think of it as, as just an ordinary day. But I can't, I, I can't help prevent myself. Um, I, I always think maybe this day they're going to come and knock on my door. Maybe this day they're going to give me a call. Um, and I try not to think that because I know I'm going to be let down yet again. Um, but I, I just can't help hoping that that's going to happen. Well, um, I, I hope that one day does, so as at least you could sit down and have a, an adult conversation about it now, not adult-child conversation, an adult conversation about it. Yeah, yeah. Ray, thank you very much indeed for joining me on the programme, and just so as you know, there will be no goals scored in the World <laughs> Cup whilst you've been talking to me, all right? <laughs> Because oh. I, know, I know you took time to actually <laughs> break off watching the World Cup. It's still Brazil won, Croatia won, all right? I'm, I'm, I'm very relieved, Graham. I'm, I'm very relieved about <laughs> all that. All right, Ray. Yeah, thanks pleasure talking to and you. And to you. Take care now. Uh, right, that's Ray there. Uh, maybe you've got some thoughts on what he had to say. What's it like to have an absent father? And what's it like to be an absent father? If you've got any thoughts, share them right now on Late Night Graham Torrington, 03453 You can text me, 81333, start your text with GT, and emails, please, to gt at bbc.co.uk. Late Night Graham Torrington.